Hello and welcome to another tutorial from MoICT. In this one, I'm going to be creating a character selection um, tutorial. Uh, this one is made with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Uh, so I've used some uh, Tekken characters uh, because their uh, designs are quite good. And uh, also I can do stuff like, for example, like this. So, you know, you can just click on some of these buttons and then the characters will change with the names there. So if you choose to do this tutorial, uh, you can always add more characters to it and uh, they will pretty much follow the same uh, principles as I've done here. Uh, a couple of things to notice is I have an infinite scrolling background that's done with CSS. There's also a, a glow changing around the characters that you can see, right? And obviously I've done the buttons here. So each of the buttons are designed in CSS. I'm not using any pictures for the buttons. Uh, right, so as soon as you click on one of the buttons there, the picture will change and the H1 tag here will change to the name as well. And in the bottom there, I just left a section there, you can add um, like a backstory or something like that about the player controls or anything like that that you want. So this is just a basic tutorial on how to put a single page interactive uh, project. Uh, so to do this one, uh, we're going to be working in Visual Studio Code. Uh, so at the moment I have the images loaded inside of the folder. So if I can just show you the images. So here are the images that we have. So this is the uh, seamless background pattern. Uh, basically I just googled and found one that I liked. Uh, this is the uh, character Brian Fury, Harang, Jin and Paul. Okay, so they are full um, PNG images there, but I'm only using part of them just to fill in this box here. I'm just going to close this one for now. To do this one, um, I'm going to create a new file in my Visual Studio Code. I'm going to call this one characters.html. Okay, and let's do the skeleton for the HTML here. Head title, the character selection, more ICT. Okay, and after that, I'm going to over here probably and then do a style okay. inside of that we'll do the body here so this is just a skeleton for with the html tags and then we'll also have a section here for the script okay where we will write up our javascript um logic in here okay. inside of the body let's create a div first i'm going to call this one uh, give this one an id of container because it's going to basically contain all the important elements okay inside the container there uh, we'll have another div for image. So that's the one that's basically inside of this one here. And inside of that, uh, we'll do an IMG. We'll leave it empty for now. And then above that, we'll do a H1. And we should give the IDs here actually. So H1 is going to be name. And image weight is going to be IMG. Okay. So after the image one, uh, we'll do another div for controls. Okay, and the controls one will have a few buttons. So basically we can create a button here. And then this one's ID is going to be Jin. Let's do on click as well. Jin here. I'm just going to duplicate these lines four times. Uh, this is all. One is, is Harang or Horang. Okay, that's fine. Um, and then last one is Brian. Okay, so this is the basic controls that we need. And the last one, we're going to do a, another div for info. So div info like so. So outside of this one, we'll have a H2 tag. Let's just say character selection in OCT and then we'll have a paragraph that says select a character by using the buttons above okay so I'm gonna try my live preview okay we will we'll just start the, my live server here it should open up in the uh, Firefox browser. So as you can see, this is the page that we just created now. So at the moment, there's uh, no styling. So it basically just shows the buttons there. And H1 tag, I'm just going to say 
uh, we'll just make it Jin Kazama to start with. So because that's the first character that's here, right? And then in the image, I can now include Jin's image. Okay. As you can see, uh, in the beginning, it will just show the entire image here. Okay, and that's perfectly fine. So I think that's all the HTML elements that we need. And now we're going to get started with the CSS. So uh, for the CSS part, what I'll do is I'll co start copying and pasting the bits that I've done instead of typing it all up. Okay, so I'm going to go make some space over here. So let's start with the container and the info. So the container and the info, basically I'm adding both of them in here. So it's got the width of six, uh, 700, height 600, margin, uh, background, background image, background si image size. So basically I'm setting it to 150 by 150 tiles of the background image. Uh, the animation, which we'll set up in a minute, is going to basically go through a scroll animation. Well, basically that's going to be the name of the animation there. Uh, it's five, five seconds, linear, and it's going to run infinitely. Uh, the border is going to be orange color, the border is going to be rounded, and all the text and the elements will be centered. So if I press save on this one, as you can see right now, the border has been set for both of them, but the, obviously the image is still way too large for um, the box here. Okay, and we'll do, deal with that in a minute. <coughs> So let's do the animation part here. So the animation is keyframe scroll. So basically I'm taking it uh, 150 pixel by 150 pixel. So I want it to move diagonally towards the top right. Okay, so if I save that one now, so as you can see, as soon as the scroll bit is done, finds the scroll animation and it starts animating it in the background. You can see the background being animated. Okay, now let's do the image. the image part so at the moment the image i want to set it to a height of 88 percent so 88 percent of the box that's the image um div yeah not the actual image itself okay and the width is going to be 100 percent and this part is important because we don't want the image to be shown outside the box so anything outside the box will be hidden so that's why we're using the overflow the position is relative because i'm going to set the absolute position for the h1 tag there and then after that, the image has got the image itself, the image tag has got a height of auto, max width is 650 pixels. So any character that's like, you know, a bit wider will basically be um, aligned to that new size. And then the animation will set up in a minute. So if I save that one now, as you can see, the character gets centered into the middle, gets resized, and then the buttons are on the bottom here. That's the glow effect. The glow effect here. So at the moment, he's looking for an animation called glow effect. So the glow effect animation is right here. So what I've done is I'm creating a animation called glow effect, and between the zero and hundred percent. So when it goes between zero and hundred percent in the keyframes, the filter is going to basically change to the blue, um, blue color, right? And then when it says uh, twenty-five percent, it's going to change to a Green with slightly larger border so this one is the smallest 35 rem 65 rem and then 50% is going to change to a red so you got your red green and blue okay so if I save that one now as you can see it's got the drop shadow around it so we're just using the filter option to create the animation for the character Okay, now let's do the H1 tag, which is called name. Okay, we'll paste it over here. So the H1 tag, the position is absolute because I want it to be um, flexible to where it sits inside the box, right? So I want it to sit right next to the characters here. And then the Z index I'm using, because if I delete this line there and save it, as you can see, it goes behind the character, but I want it to be in front. So that's why I'm giving it like a 9999 um, 
values on there so it stays on top of all the other layers that's behind it uh, font size font family uh, once again uh, the drop shadow just to read the text a little bit better there's also a text stroke around it a black stroke around the text there uh, and then this is these are for the positioning of this element so basically because it's absolute we can position it any way that we want so if i set that to say um zero percent right it will be positioned right here actually we can leave it there as well that's probably better so for the buttons i went with a glossy look for them uh, but i wanted each of them to have its own color okay so the base of it is in this part here so if i paste it here right now so at the moment there's no background color assigned to them because the background color will be assigned with each of the tags so i got jean paul horang and brian okay so its position is relative display padding color font size font family uh, border radius is three pixels so it's a bit slightly rounded uh, box shadow it's inside right so it, it will give a little bit of a glossy look and then text shadow and then I see the border radius right. and then we need to do one for the after but once it's been rendered we still want to have a little bit of a glossy effect so as you can see once it goes after you can see a little bit of a, um, a, a roundish edge around them right so by doing it sort of like you know removing all the content after so you can still read the text but you're basically just adding a overlay overlay to the button and then after that we're gonna do the hover okay so when it hovers i want the font size to be slightly bigger and the color of the text to turn to black so there you go so right now it changes to black as well okay and then after that we want to have the uh, all four characters background setup okay, so if i move them here and then paste this over i did spell it wrong before power rank oh there okay so as you can see the gin one i've got the background image linear gradient going from blue to sky blue for paul it goes from red to salmon and then for hurang i had to do the uh, orange to lighter yellow and then for brian we did the purple to lighter purple okay so there's you there's the buttons and as you can see because we have the after bit there that gives us a little bit of a inner glow to make it look glossy okay, and as i hover over the buttons get slightly bigger and the text colors will changing as well okay so now we can start on the javascript side of it so for the javascript part uh, just going to be making one function that's basically going to change the image and the h1 tag per click right so if i click on brian or paul or horang it will just change the image and the h1 tag so let's go do that i'm going to call it function called change character okay inside of this function i want to accept a string or character and then let's do a switch statement here so inside the switch statement let's pass in the character as well and i'm going to say case if the case is brian then i want to go to the document the element by id Okay, I'm after the img element, which is the image one. Then we do src. So to basically go for the source for the image. So right here I can say image slash brian.png because I know the file name there. Okay, so we already have the file there. I think I must have misspelled the whole wrong one as well. I'm just gonna fix that quickly. Wrong. There you go. 
Okay, so we got the Brian, PNG, Warang, Jin, and Paul. Okay, and then I'll break that. Okay, so as soon as that is met, don't need that anymore. And we also actually need to change the H1 tag. So document okay, element by ID again. This time I want to get the name dot in a HTML is equals to uh, Brian Yuri. Okay. And then after that we need to do the case for Paul um Jin. Yep. Do for Jin here. Actually it'd be easier to copy and paste this instead of typing it up. One, two, okay, okay, and this one is Jin, bunch of Paul, and then Maro. Okay, and of course we got that one there. This one we change it to Jin the PNG. Change the name to. Jin Azama Paul Change that to Paul or PNG and this one to Paul Phoenix and then this one to Paul and PNG 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 no just once and then just change the name to Okay, I think that's all we need to do for this one. All right, and uh, now just to link this function to the buttons because we're only using one function and we're passing in the character's name and it will just change it based on that condition. Okay, so if I go to on a click here, I'm gonna say change character, change character, and inside of that, we're gonna do a single quote, we'll say Jin. Like so, okay, copy this. Just here. Okay, and change this one to Paul. And this one's to Warang. And this one to Brian. Okay, so they're all been linked up. So I click on Jin. It doesn't show the PNG for some reason. Oh yeah, that's because this is supposed to be images, not image. The folder is called images, yeah. If I click on that, Jin showing, Paul, Barong, and Brian. And nice thing about the CSS is that as soon as it's loaded up, it's actually, it's, it will um, trace the image and then use the filter on there. Okay, so you get a nice um, effect done with very little code. Okay, so this was a quick tutorial on how to create a character selection. Uh, we're going to move forward with some of the other tutorials in JavaScript and if I find something more interesting, I will also um, try to recreate that and do a tutorial on it. Uh, hope you have a good day and uh, please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this one. I'll leave the source code and everything else in the link in the description. Uh, other than that, I will see you on the next tutorial.